Hey guys, let's talk about camera angles. Good ones. I like this one. Hey guys, my name is Rylan Russell, and in this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 of my favorite camera angles to use in our church's live stream, and how using these can help take your viewer from being a, a fly on the wall to truly feeling like they are a part of the experience. So before we dive in, I'm gonna assume that you already have the two most basic camera angles in place, which is the head to toe shot and the chest up shot. So if you don't have these, do not pass go, do not collect $200, but most likely you do. So let's dive in. One of the first shots that I see people constantly leaving out of their live streams is a wide shot. And the reason that this shot is important is that it gives the viewer context. You'll often hear these called establishing shots. And I like to use these, you know, when we're first starting a service or coming in and out of certain elements. And it really gives the person who is checking you out for the first time a sense of what the actual space is that they're going to be living in during your live stream. And lens wise, we've used focal lengths between seven and 20 millimeters on our micro four thirds bodies, but this will be dependent on your own space and your own cameras. The second camera angle that will bring life to your live stream is incorporating a side profile cam. So many churches stick with just keeping your cameras front and center, and this can make the image feel pretty flat. So I like to have a camera that can capture kind of down the line of your front singers and instrumentalists. This combined with focus pulls down that line of singers can be really nice. One of my favorite ways to help the viewer really feel like they are a part of the congregation is to shoot through the congregation. By including hands being raised or silhouettes of your congregation, it puts your viewer in the seats. And these shots look best on a telephoto lens, and we've had good success with the Canon 70-200 f2.8 lens adapted onto our Panasonic GH4, and they're usually running that on a monopod. But one thing to consider with the roaming camera is that wireless video transmitters are important, and I wouldn't recommend anything less than the Teradek units. And I'll put links to the ones we use in the description. Recently, we've been experimenting with our roaming cam operator using a gimbal instead of a monopod. And this has allowed for some really dynamic movement. And one of my faves is the dolly shot. Essentially, the camera is at a head level and we're using a 35 to 100 f2.8 Panasonic lens, which is a little bit lighter on our G7. And that's on top of a Ronin SC gimbal. And this is a cheaper way to accomplish those center dolly shots you're seeing churches do behind the congregation. And just remember using a gimbal is not for beginners, but it accomplishes what is missing in so many of our live streams, motion. While a dolly shot is usually at crowd level, the jib or cable cam shots puts the perspective up above. And you might think that a shot like this is really expensive to achieve, and it can be, but we've actually installed a Y-Roll Lite cable cam that we use every week, and I think that ran us about $400. And there's a full video on my channel breaking down our setup. You know, is it as good as a Defy Dactyl Cam? No, <laughs> but we've loved it. A motorized slider might be the very first piece of extra tech that I would give a go if you're looking to up your live stream. We use and love the 48 inch GVM sliders and we run them on loop mode and use them around our drums and as a center tight shot. 
Slider shots, they work best when you can include something in the foreground to really emphasize the movement. So whether that's Christmas lights or symbols or candles, it will really help the shot. And another thing that we love about these GVM sliders is that they include this automatic parallaxing effect and that keeps your subject in the center of your frame while it's looping. When your side stage camera operator starts to get bored, send them further backstage and have them shoot over the shoulders of your band and singers. This is a great way to show the congregation worshiping without having them in focus. I'm not really a fan of highlighting congregants' faces while worshiping without them knowing. It kind of feels like an invasion of their personal worship time to me. So if we keep our focus plane on the band and then we just blur out our congregants, we can show them without focusing on them. By going handheld, you really give a raw video feel. And if your church culture allows you to, get in close to shoot instrumentalists and vocalists to capture details. You know, a camera with in-body image stabilization or a heavier cam like a Blackmagic or Ursa or C200, those can really help get you the kind of handheld angles you'd want because micro jitters are, are not our friends. <laughs> and to be honest, we have not fully tried having our cam operators mixing in with the band to get these kind of shots yet. And you may not be ready for that either, but keep these angles in mind as you are brainstorming new shots. Sometimes the best thing you can do with your camera angles is just to change the perspective. For a while, we actually experimented and used a wide angle lens on one of our motorized sliders. We mounted it really low in the center of our front row, pointing up at the band. And this can kind of give you a, a hero shot, if you will. It gives you that vibe where big lighting cues appear even bigger and big looks and stage designs appear with more impact. So give it a try. This one has to be used sparingly as it can be disorienting to the viewer, but basically a Dutch angle is a shot that is purposefully not level. And there may be a time where it actually helps with framing though. You know, well, we've had camera operators give this a go to include one of our crosses in the background behind a vocalist. Um, you know, maybe you're doing a song about chaos or, or feeling uncertain and a Dutch angle could subconsciously translate that feeling to the live stream. So there are 10 different camera angles you can try to enhance your church's live stream. Do me a favor, comment below what angle are you most interested in trying out next? And while you are doing that, why not go ahead and give this video a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see what cameras and lenses we are using to accomplish these shots in our church, then check out this video where I break down our full broadcast system. Remember friends, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for God's glory. We'll see you in the next one.